Hey guys, Sarah Levin here with a video tutorial on how I edit with my Wild Fox Lightroom preset, available on sarahlevinpresets.com. So to start with, we'll go ahead and throw the preset on my first photo, and that already looks pretty good. Typically, I bring my highlights down so I can recover the sky. When I work on a photo, I usually start at the top here and I'll work all the way down through the settings and then I'll fine tune by working my way back up through the settings and just tweak the photo until I really feel like it is perfect. So getting started here, looks pretty good. If you want it to be more of a pink photo, you can take your oranges and you can turn it like more red, but we don't want the skin to be too red, so turn the saturation down just a bit, the luminance up a little bit. I find that the yellows can be where a lot of your highlights are, so I like to turn the saturation down on that and turn the luminance up, but not too much. We can take it a little more towards the red to give it more of a blush tone throughout the photo, which works really good for this one. There's a little bit of green in the background on this poster right here, so I'm turning that down in saturation. The luminance I'll probably turn down and take my hue a little bit more towards the yellow so it matches the photo overall. For the sharpening, you might want to zoom in on your photo or you can take this little thing and click right there get your sharpening just how you want it you don't want to over sharpen especially if you have jpeg photo but with raw you can really crank that and get the detail to show nicely if you want your photo to be a little bit more smooth you can take the luminance up which gives you a slightly more what i like to call like a painterly effect but you don't want to take it too far where you lose the detail but I'm gonna leave mine down because I like it to be really sharp and textury which is why I put the grain in this little formation here I have it like this so you get some nice grain pattern in here which is a little film inspired for the distortion I go into manual and to get that wide angle lens effect which is popular in like travel photos, I take the amount up anywhere between 10 and 15, but I never really go past 15 because then it starts to get a little warpy and weird. So make sure you have constrained crop checked so you don't get white borders on your photo. For this, I'm gonna leave the vignetting how it is, but you can always bring the amount up to take away the dark edges of your vignette but I like it on this one, so I'm gonna leave it. And I think this photo looks pretty good. You can always bring your warmth up, and if you don't want it to be so magenta, you can take your tint down towards green, and it'll change your hue up a bit, which means you might have to go back to your HSL and tweak it a little bit. I think this looks pretty good. You can see before and after. Now this one is a little blown out, but I really liked this photo and I think that it's still usable. So we'll throw the preset on there. And if you get this kind of effect on your photo and you're just like, um, that's really blown out, I don't think it's usable, you can still recover a lot, especially if you're shooting in RAW. So we'll go in and take the exposure down quite a bit. And the highlights, shadows down, cause those were up and leave the whites a little bit. So we'll take the lights down because those were up and the darks were also up. We can just start playing with it here to get a more balanced photo. If you're finding that the tones are still really dark, even though you've messed with your um, tones and your highlights and such, you might want to look at your HSL. like. For instance, the oranges could be really dark, and you might want to lighten those. I like to take yellows and boost those a lot. I think, especially if your oranges are good or if they're on the darker scale, you can take the highlights in the yellow or the luminance and really boost that, and it really makes the image pop. 
I'm gonna take that and boost it a little towards the green side so it's not so red. Next I'm gonna go to my red. I like to do that last and really use that to like make the red stand out. So I'm gonna turn down the red and luminance, turn up the saturation, and then make it a little more raspberry colored since this raspberry wine is in the background. Checking my sharpening, that looks good. And again, we've got my wide angle lens effect on here so you can see what it does. I'm gonna leave it at 15. So going back up to the top, I like to work my way up and down through the settings a couple times just to really fine tune it. Yeah, I think that's pretty good looking. I'm happy with that. And you can see before and after. So what you might think might be an unusable photo, you can really recover a lot out of. So on to the next photo. Um, we'll go ahead and put the preset on there and it looks blown out, but again, we can really recover a lot. And it's starting to look a little kind of bleh in the colors. So once we get the overall image like exposed nicely, we'll go down to the colors and work on those. But first I want to get it looking more balanced. Okay, so the oranges could use a little work. I want to make the photo feel more blush colored, so I'm gonna work on my oranges first and then my yellows bring that luminance and you can see the yellow is in the trees mostly so kind of like it popping like that so I'm gonna tweak these colors until it looks just right Going down to the green, I'm going to turn it up just a little bit because on far away shots it's a little harder to tell that there's green. And we can tweak in the camera calibration sometimes these colors down here really help give a nice boost in that direction that you want to go so I want to get it to look really rosy. And going back up to my HSL, I'm going to rework these tones a little. Sometimes the skin is the same color as your background, which makes it a little difficult. So you'll want to tweak the HSL and get that just right. And overall, I think this is looking pretty good. And if you're ever just struggling to get some of those tones, you can always grab this little tone curve dropper and just grab that tone you want to change and that automatically changes it for you just by sliding your mouse up and down. I want this leg to be a little brighter, so I'm going to drag that up just a little bit and this one up a little bit too. That's looking a little better. And then I'm going to turn the clarity up to give it that extra boost. I think that looks really good. You can see before and after how the wide angle just really gives it that pop. And you'll have to be careful because if the wide angle lens effect is too wide, you'll get your columns in the background kind of bowing a little bit, but I'm not worried about that because I'll be cropping for Instagram about here, so you won't really be able to tell. I think we're done with this image, and it looks good. So on to another photo, we'll put Wild Fox on here, and it may seem pretty bright, so we'll go to our exposure, turn that down, highlights down, and we'll recover some of the whites, but I still like to leave some so it's not too faded looking. Overall, it's pretty warm looking to me, so I'm gonna make it a little more magenta hued, and go down to my tone curves. That's looking pretty good. We'll go into HSL because I want to fine tune these colors so they're matching a little more between these flowers and my shirt. 
get a true red there. And then magentas should make that a little more red, that way they match the shirt. With orange, you can really dictate how your photo feels. I'm going to make it feel a little more faded, a little more blush and pink toned. And I feel like that's looking pretty balanced. It's not too bright and it's not too dark, so that's a good time to pull your clarity up because that'll really bring out the shadows and the detail without messing up your photo too much. Overall, I think this looks pretty good. And my check our distortion. I like it where it is, so we'll leave it at 15. Oh, another thing, you can go to your blues. You can turn your saturation up and your lumens down to really bring out those blue skies. And maybe change the hue a little bit so it doesn't look too awkward and saturation up a little and I think that adds a little something to the photo and makes it more colorful and alive and we'll go to our next photo this one has a lot of white and I think wild fox works really good on photos with a lot of white so we'll start by fixing the exposure on this bring the highlights down bring the whites down a little this is looking good. I'm gonna make it feel a little bit more rosy, but I don't want the skin to feel too red. And the yellows are where we can really manipulate how this photo looks overall, especially if you're blonde, you can desaturate a lot and have the white hair look, but I don't want to do that too much. I still want the whites to pop and be really bright. You can go into these little guys right here, and if you drag this down, you can fine tune your midtones a little bit. If you drag this up, you can make your shadows a little more faded. Dragging that down will make your highlights a little more faded. So we'll leave that up. That looks good. So I'm going to go into the red here because I want the boots to pop and I want them to have like a true red. So I'll turn that saturation up. I think that looks pretty good. So with the distortion, it really gives you a long-legged look, which I like to add. Of course, I think anybody would like to add that. So that's a good little trick. I'm going to fine-tune here again. I'll spend a little bit of time on them until I perfect it. That's looking pretty good. I like that kind of faded, rosy look while still retaining the bright whites here. And if you want to go down and further tweak your colors a little, you can go into these camera calibration colors. And that looks good to me. I like that. So you can see before and after. Last photo for Wild Fox throw that on there and here's a photo for example where I shot in stark light with shadow and I'm in a hot spot right here so this will be showing you how to recover this nicely. Highlights down, exposure down and we're already bringing this photo back to something usable. recover some of those darks so the photo isn't too blown out. I kind of like the shadows down like that because it adds some nice contrast. I'm going to go into my HSL and work with the tones here. And I always edit kind of back and forth through my settings a few times as I tweak like the colors I'll go back and change. I feel like it's a little flat, so I want to add little boosts in the tones. Clarity does a nice job with that. And we'll maybe bring back some of the highlights. You can go down to your grain, and if you don't like grain, you can always just turn your amount down, and it'll be a nice clean photo again. But I like to add 
some green it makes it feel a little more vintage if you've got a vintage photo that looks good we'll go into our camera calibration and do a final push and pull of some colors here and I think I'm gonna call that one done I think that it's one of the best presets that's applicable to most photos and I think that a lot of people have been able to make some really beautiful photos with it so I'm really excited to see how you guys use it. So be sure to use hashtag Presets on Instagram. This video should help you better understand how I edit my photos for Instagram and how to work with the Wild Fox preset in Lightroom. If you have any questions or requests for other videos I should make, leave your comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more.